very difficult for Gerald Vick, who will start in his place to guard that four-man out on the perimeter. So don't be surprised if KU doesn't go with a little bit of a bigger lineup. We might see more Carlton Bragg as well. Well, Holly, to your point, here are today's starting lineups brought to you by Can-Am. And there is LeGerald Vick getting the start, the four guards with Landon Lucas. And for Kansas, that is a conundrum. See how long Bill Self sticks with it. The problem is they have no backups on the bench that play the guard spot but LeGerald Vick. And for TCU, how about Kenrich Williams and Vladimir Brodyansky, who combined for 39 last night. These two former junior college players both arrived as sophomores, so they're only in their junior years, and they've given Jamie Dixon's Horn Frogs a huge lift this season. Last year's player of the year in the Big 12 championship was Devontae Graham. And without Josh Jackson out there, Frank Mason, Devontae Graham, you would have to think would be the primary focal points offensively for KU as Jackson will be forced to sit this one out. Well, fortunately for Bill Self, they have grown accustomed to the small lineup. And what makes it so effective is they have a lot of three-point shooting out there. Mason, first drive of the game. Offensive rebound, Landon Lucas. Makai Luke spots up. Yes. Much like Iowa State in that first game, Kansas shoots that three ball as well as anybody in the country. Kenrich Williams dumps one down. Brodzianski hits the underside of the rim, taken away by Vic. Vic the trailer. Good rebound by Alex Robinson, who was terrific last night in the win over Oklahoma. And, and to your point, Bob, this team plays with two very good point guards. Jalen Fisher, the man with the ball right now, a freshman. Very solid season. The highest ranked player ever signed by TCU is a top 40 player. J.D. Miller gets the Horn Frogs on the board. He only averages about seven and a half points a game. Mikhailuk will drive it, and Svi Mikhailuk is two for two. He's got all five Kansas points. And we've seen him do that, right? He's evolved from more than just a spot-up shooter, starting to go to the basket. He'll have opportunities today because of the, the way that defense spreads out on the shooting. The freshman, Jalen Fisher, highest-ranked recruited player ever at TCU. Rodzianski, and that is a nice soft touch that he showed all night last night as well. He had 20 points and seven rebounds in the win over Oklahoma. Yeah, and if you're tuning in for the first time this year and watching TCU, he's also, like Jeffrey Carroll, one of the most improved players in the league. He's a really outstanding inside-outside scorer. Devontae Graham got a little fancy with the dribble, ended up freeing himself up for a wide-open look and couldn't hit it. Kenrich Williams is a tough, strong wing who can shoot the three but loves to get to the basket and is a terrific rebounder for his size. He'll try a three here. Vic had good position inside, and J.D. Miller is called for the foul. And Jamie Dixon has talked about his team being a different group right now than they were a month, month and a half ago. They came into the postseason having lost seven straight games, but he felt like they were turning a corner, and last night they shot 60% in the first half. Well, Bob, we've said it a number of times uh, this year, you can play well in this league and still lose. And we've seen that from the bottom of the league, little zone now. They played a lot of zone last night against Oklahoma. Vic to Lucas. Now, that looked like attacking the old Syracuse zone, which Jamie Dixon did well at Pitt. And they put they put Vic right in the middle of the zone as a playmaker. Alex Robinson turned it over. He had nine assists and no turnovers last night against Oklahoma. Yeah, take a look here. Watch Vic work right in the middle, and he finds Lucas inside. 
And Lucas should have some size opportunities today. The 50-year senior. It's one thing to play zone against OU. How hard is it to play zone against Kansas? Really hard because they know what they're doing, Bob. To that point. Yeah, they, and see it. And what I love about this, as well as they shoot it, what do I always say? You attack the zone from the paint out. The minute you start scoring inside against a team zone, that other coach says, you know, we might be in trouble. Fisher, nice move in the lane by Jalen Fisher. He's a young man that signed at UNLV. Mason attacks, and he'll go to the line. But just when you think you've done something well at one end, and Fisher had that nice move in the lane, you blink, and Frank Mason is at the free throw line at the other end. He goes by you like uh, Wiley Coyote, you know, where we are. <laughs> Like, as soon as they scored and we saw Mason, I said, okay, TCU's in trouble. He's getting to the basket. And Jamie Dixon held up a little help sign. <laughs> well, what you love about this kid, right? Size in terms of the power. He's got the strength, quickness, athleticism, and most importantly, skill. In the top 10 all-time in KU scoring, Big 12 Player of the Year, and one of five finalists for the Kuzi Award. Robinson, reverse, is good. And he's had a really good sophomore year. He's a Dallas kid who started his career at Texas A&M. Top 100 player, has family at TCU in terms of being a legacy, and he transferred back home. Great addition. His mom, Darla, played basketball at TCU exactly. in the early 80s. Yep. Crossover by Mason, sets up Steve McKaylin. He's got another three. All the scoring for Kansas now has been initiated from the paint out. That time, penetration got the ball deep. Shot clock down to eight. Alex Robinson turns the corner around Lucas in the corner. An air ball from J.D. Miller. They hit ahead to LeGerald Vick. Mason's the trailer, and he's fouled by Fisher. Free throws for Frank Mason when we come back. Smiles for Josh Jackson, but he'll have to be watching this game from the bench all afternoon. We've watched him from his freshman year as a role player to a starter, and now, as I said in the open, one of the great players in an incredible basketball history. Think about all the great players that have played at Kansas. Who would have known that an anonymous kid from Petersburg, Virginia would turn into a consensus national player of the year? Holly? Well, we talked to Frank about, you know, when this season started, did you envision this kind of year for yourself? And he said, you know, I really didn't, but what I decided to do was just put my head down and work as hard as possible. He's been one of the hardest workers in the weight room. He said, I really focused on working hard in the classroom and doing everything right for this team. He said it means a lot to him to play here in this building. He wants to gain momentum moving into the postseason forward. And it's just been a very focused effort from this young man this year. Well, Holly, you had a couple of experiences, even on senior night, where you actually got some emotion out of Frank Mason. We never saw that coming. Well, he actually started crying before he walked off the floor. He's been so cute. They have a sign in their locker room of how many days left until the end of the season, and he keeps erasing the sign because he just doesn't want it to end. Who can blame him? And how could it be more special as Fisher maneuvers to the front of the rim than playing for your entire career at Allen Fieldhouse and playing for Kansas? Yep, well, without a doubt. We were there that night, and, uh, you know, there's such there's some special things in college basketball year after year, and there's nothing quite like senior day at Allen Fieldhouse. And as much as Frank Mason tried to hold the emotions in, his dad couldn't. Oh, he could he not. He was a puddle as he came out and Remember? stood next to Frank, next to the big frame jersey as Landon Lucas, out of the double team, sets up Grant. Hits a three. Everything's coming from the inside out, whether it's zone or man. And right now, very proficient start for Kansas. 
I think the best thing about senior night was Frank's son, Amari, who's yep. now five years old, got a chance to take it all in. You know, think about how special that was. Rodzianski lost it to Lucas. Ran for three more. Doesn't get the roll. Rodzianski's got the rebound. Tough assignment as well for TCU playing last night. And obviously, you earn the right to wait until the semifinals or the quarterfinals if you're Kansas and get the night off. The bottom four teams play last night because yeah. they're the bottom four teams. Doesn't make it any easier on Jamie Dixon's team to last night and then come back for a matinee against the number one team in the country. But it's a two-edged sword, Bob, honestly, because we've seen teams play the first night and they use that night for momentum. And as, you know, on the other hand, a Kansas, they're watching. Now, we know how good they are, right? Kansas is watching. K TCU gets, you know, gets a feel for the tournament. Get out there. By the way, first time ever TCU in white uniforms last night as the favorite. But no doubt the fatigue factor is an issue, but it, it works both ways. Well, Jalen Fisher was number 34 on our ESPN 100, the number eight point guard in America. Completes the three-point play. He now goes to TCU. This is a team that I think won eight games of the Big 12 in their first four years in the league. Won six games of the Big 12 this year. And they were so close, weren't they? And that turns it over. Yeah, a lot of the teams at the bottom of this 10-team league were so close to coming up with a couple more wins. Good help by Svee. Bain for three, off to the left. Offensive rebound, and the putback is there for Kenridge Williams. He is a good player. He sat out last year with uh, knee surgery. He's from Waco, Texas, under-recruited. One year at uh, New Mexico Junior College, he's really made himself into a good player. That double-double he had last night against Oklahoma was his fourth in a row. Steve Mikhailu hasn't been this hot from three in quite some time. He's made his first three in a row as he's been in a bit of a drought from the midway seat, midpoint of the Big 12 season on. Yeah, four for his last 20, but that's like a 300 hitter. You know, you've seen that, right? You go a week without any hits. Brad called for the foul. And then you go three for four with, uh, you know, four RBIs. <laughs> <laughs> Shooter shoot, right? I'm not sure that Monte Morris and the rest of his teammates need the scouting report. I think they know Kansas pretty well, but they are still watching this game to get a look at their would-be opponent tomorrow night as Mikhailu finishes off the feed from Devontae Graham. And now Jamie Dixon needs a timeout. Double-digit lead for KU, right down the road from Lawrence at the Sprint Center. Speed, Mikhailuk, and here's an interesting note, Bobby. Arrived at Kansas as a 16-year-old. If Speed plays all four years, he will end his basketball career and still only be 20 years old. One of three Ukrainians playing Division I college basketball, Holly. Well, you talk about how young he was when he arrived, Fran. He really had the, the shape and physique of a very young boy, a young teenager. But through great work in the weight room, Andrea Hootie has put on almost 35 pounds on that frame. So he's not only gone from a boy to a man at Kansas physically and mentally, it's showing up on the floor and how much more confident and physical he is taking it to the basket and having confidence with his shot and defense. Andrea Hootie is... A strength and conditioning coach that is just at the top of that profession. She was recruited to Kansas from UConn, where she worked with both the men's and women's national championship teams. So I think her credentials were strong coming in, and they've only gotten better. Probably the one thing that Gino Ariema and Jim Calhoun could ever agree on. <laughs> Brandon Parrish goes to Bragg, gets shut down. Shepard hit the underside of the rim, and it's out off of TCU. Yeah, right now the Horn Frogs in the paint are not playing with any force. Shepard, Williams, Brodzianski all have had opportunities to score around the rim.
Mason. A long rebound. Pulled down by Desmond Bain. Here comes Robinson. Alex Robinson right around Mikhailuk. Beautiful move from Alex Robinson, the sophomore from Fort Worth. We mentioned they've got the two point guard, so the pressure's not always on Robinson. They share the ball handling duties. Carlton Bragg, he'll go to the line. Bumped by Brandon Parrish. Really slick move by the lefty. Watch him get to the other side of the basket. So if the shot blocker comes up to the right side, you see where Lucas is, there's no way he can get back in front. And he uses the rim to protect his shot. Well done. Alex Robinson had six or more assists 16 times this season for TCU, including eight of their final 12 games. And he had 20 points, nine assists, and no turnovers. Rather, 17-9 and zero turnovers last night against Oklahoma. Yeah, he was very, very good. This is this is a, a TCU team, although they, have, although they have a couple seniors, like a lot of the teams we've watched this year, and they have a lot of components back. LeVar Shepard ties up Landon Lucas. Possession arrow will keep it with TCU, and Devontae Graham's hurt. Let's take another look. Couple of big bodies and Devontae Graham in a pile up. He just kind of got stretched out there and then ended up holding his right leg. He hasn't put any pressure on it yet, Bob. Well, that's good to see. At least able to walk off the floor without much assistance, but that's a pretty significant limp. Let's see what happens to Devontae Graham. Well, not only are they shorthanded without Jackson, they lost the big fella, Yudoka Azabuki early in the year who was expected to anchor the front line with Landon Lucas. You're right, he can barely put any weight on that left leg, just trying to walk it off back in the tunnel. So now no Devontae Graham and no Josh Jackson. Dwight Colby has come on. And Landon Lucas had to get tended to by the trainer as well, as he may have been slightly cut. So the officials have to stop play. So Lucas could be looked at. Jamie Dixon shares a laugh <laughs> with Landon Lucas as he goes down to the TCU bench. I think he said. They need some cleaning products yeah. for the TCU guys. <laughs> so with Devontae Graham in the locker room and Josh Jackson on the bench. How deep does the rotation go for <laughs> I, I Bill Self? I would tell herself I'd, uh, yeah. I'd start to maybe get ready. Well, of course, they got Mitch Whitefoot as well, the freshman. And they're used to playing shorthanded. You saw Yudoka Azabuki. He's been out the whole season, basically. As that three goes down. And Rich Williams from the corner. And the lead down to seven. Psychologically, it affects you a little too. As nice to have Frank Mason as a security yeah, blanket. It doesn't affect him at all. But you look around and you go, well, these aren't the guys I'm used to playing with out here much of the time. But uh, all these guys on the court right now, you know, have logged major minutes together. Traveling calls on Alex Robinson, and Holly has more on Devontae Graham. Holly? Well, I followed Devontae back into the tunnel. He was hopping on one leg, not wanting to put pressure on that left leg as he went back through the tunnel. There is a big comprehensive medical training facility behind here that the Big 12 puts together. There's about four doctors here on staff, including the Royals physician. Kansas, of course, has their own doctor, so they've taken him back into that hallway in that training facility. White Colby down low, lost the battle with Kenrich Williams. But now Williams has a pass from Jalen Fisher. Sail out of bounds, so we will keep our eyes on that tunnel and see if Devontae Graham at some point makes his way back to the KU bench. Well, if you're TCU, you've got to take advantage here. That time Jalen Fisher had Kenrich Williams out in front and just overshot the runway. Mason to pick. Oh. Offensive rebound, Lucas. Right here, right here. And it 
looks like Dwight Colby will be called for a foul, clearing space for Landon Lucas. Jamie Dixon has been to 11 NCAA tournaments in 13 years. The winningest coach by percentage, Bob, in the history of the Big East Conference. Think about that. Chew on that one for a couple seconds. And now he's back at his alma mater. That's right, where he was an all-conference point guard two years. In fact, he point guard the teams that went to the NCAA tournament in 1986 and 87. Rodzianski with the left hand, draws the foul on Colby. So Brodzianski to the free throw line, the ACC championship, New York life. ACC tournament continuing at Barclays Center. North Carolina easily advances over Miami. Louisville Duke currently over on ESPN. And then the doubleheader tonight before they get to the semifinals. Tomorrow night, while we're having the semifinals here in Kansas City at the Big 12, Duke's up by a couple at halftime. Once you get to the quarterfinals of the ACC tournament, then you see the Blue Bloods, right? And there's a lot of them yeah, in the absolutely. ACC. Yeah. Mason with the reverse. Beautiful move from Frank Mason. Well, like Robertson, he used the rim. He got to the other side, and once Brzezanski showed to help, he really had no chance to stay in front. Alex Robinson stripped away by Mason from behind. Wow. Makai Luke the trailer. His first miss from three. Makai Luke comes over with a quick double team on Brzezanski, and he avoided the turnover. And Rich Williams gets the bounce. Good player. Kenrich Williams, great guy to build around for next season. Of course, a lot of basketball left here today, but Williams and Brodzianski, you watch next year, Bob, they're going to be really solid players. Landon Lucas, deep post position. Well, that possession aside, if I would have told you that at the end of the season, we would count up all the double-doubles, and Kenrich Williams would have more than any other player in the Big 12? I would have been mildly surprised because I remember his sophomore year before he got hurt and he showed a lot of this kind of promise. I would have been very surprised, but of course, I'm you're not Frank for But you were in the Big 10. Now you're with me in the Big yeah. 12. Real basketball. <laughs> Looking for balance in your digestive system? Try a line probiotic for a non-stop sweet treat goodness. Hold Penn State and Oregon, Arizona State. It's early, but it's close, fellas. And Chris, right now, Oregon listed by Joe Lenardi in his bracketology as a two seed. Couple of top two seeds and the Big 12 as things stand right now. Kansas, probably the number one overall seed. And Baylor will play later on tonight in a game against Kansas State, who's right on the bubble. That's almost like game seven, potentially, for K-State, according to Joe Lenardi. Is if K-State yeah. could find a way to upset Baylor, that might put them in the field. I think it would, based on Joey Brackett's uh, latest projections. Like yep. First four out. Shot clock at one. Williams steps back and knocks down an 18-footer. Not surprised, Bob. I tell you that. Well, you know everything, <laughs> as I've come to realize. No, no, no. I'm just glad we get a chance to watch him. We didn't see him much during the year. I got over to Fort Worth a few times at a non-conference. Nice reverse by LeGerald Vick. I said this earlier to you, and I really believe this. College basketball is, to me, it's, it's better than ever. The skill level, oh boy, speaking of better than ever, how about Devontae Graham sprinting through the tunnel? They're running back to the bench. That is good news, and the Kansas fans see him returning to the bench, and they are reacting. Alex Robinson misses. Long rebound to Jalen Fisher. But the flow of the game, the offense, the way it's being played in these first two games, terrific. Smooth hook shot from Vlad Brodzianski. Yeah, more teams shooting the three better than ever. Team scoring at a higher rate historically. That didn't take long for Devontae Graham to get set to check back in. He's already at the table. Michael Williams. 
Williams with five seconds on the shot clock gives it up to Robinson. Robinson's going to have to put one up potentially. Shot clock violation. And Jalen Fisher's letting the rest of his teammates know we need more of a sense of urgency as Devontae Graham Holly is back on the floor. That's right. He tweaked an ankle. The athletic training staff for Kansas has done a nice job getting him back and ready to go. It looks like he's got a little extra wrapping under, I believe it's his right ankle, if I see correctly. But uh, he is out there ready to go. I'm not sure which ankle. Don't, don't quote me on that one, guys. I'm sorry. But uh, I, I looked at it and I couldn't tell. But I thought he was hopping off, not putting weight on his left ankle. So let's yeah. leave it at the left. I'm sorry. I think you're right. It was his left leg that he was favoring. But the fact that we can't tell is just that much better news. For Kansas yep, and self. Kansas fans. Bill Self might not be able to tell, but he knows he's back out there. And Rich Williams with a takeaway. Robinson. No one home, and he still missed the layup. That ball came off his hand with too much spin. Fought Carlton Bragg, though, for the loose ball and won the battle. So it will stay with TCU. But Robinson very frustrated that he missed the bunny. Yep. He had it. He was right at the rim, and I watched the ball come off his hand. And if it's got too much spin and it hits that rim, it's just going to spin out like one of your pucks, Bob, you know? Again, not sure. <laughs> After a nice season together where the venom is coming from at the end of the year. <laughs> Didn't you think that ball was going in? You see it? <laughs> like a lot of your putts. Yes, thank you. <laughs> that was a, what, three-footer? That was a gimme. All right. <laughs> Move on. Five and a half more minutes, so I get a Fran Priscilla break, and I'm looking forward to it. Jalen oh. Fisher feeds the posts. And now a reset for Robinson. Williams won't wait. That missed everything. Here comes LeGerald Vick. Big lineup for Kansas. Colby. How about that jump hook? Yep. That was smooth in the post. He's got a smile on his face. You know, the one positive for Kansas without Josh Jackson, they have to play big, and it only can help them when they get ready for the NCAA tournament if they need to play this way. Work in the offensive glass is Kavar Shepard. He's got a chance for a three-point play. Well, take a look at the Miss Mississippi transfer. Remember, he missed last year. Not only did he have to sit out, but recovery from ACL surgery. And he got that ball deep. He's happy to be contributing late in the year. Although just picked up his third foul. Normally, Dwight Colby sits down because the small handful of minutes that he gets serves the purpose that Bill Self needs. Well, the fact that he now has three fouls, it's a different kind of storyline. Because Colby, without Josh Jackson, might have to give Bill Self a lot more minutes than he normally does. As now J.D. Miller's called for a foul. That's his second. Rodzianski back in. He'll replace Miller. And Chris Washburn has checked in as well. So a new front line for TCU. You see a 3-2 zone at the top. Jamie's played a lot of different defenses this year. And we've seen three so far. And Lucas finds a Gerald Vick on the cut. Technical foul on Jamie Dixon. Jamie Dixon reacted like a madman after LeGerald Vick went down the lane and laid it in and was teed up from across the court by Don Daly. Well, Jamie has been known to be intense. Take a look. Great cut, first of all. And there you see the reaction. They don't want coaches to overreact this year. And the coach in the slot, I think it was, did you mention Don Daly? Don Daly called the yeah, technical he from across was. the court. I, I've seen a lot worse all year, but, you know, it's tournament time, and 
These are very good officials, I'm, I'm sure, who all will be advancing to the NCAA tournament. The only thing I can think of was that I think Jamie Dixon may have thought that Lucas traveled before the pass. Didn't look like there was any obvious foul, but boy, did he react in a very animated way that drew the T, Holly. Well, you know, I, it's interesting. We a lot of us complain about the officiating over, officiating over the course of the year, but I thought it was very interesting to know that um, the supervisor of officials they look at these officials on videotape in person. They really agonize over who will advance to the NCAA tournament. And of the 16 officials in the Big 12, all 16 are considered to advance that they have had quality years this season. That's a great so sign. Nice. Yeah, Legerald Vick, perfect read of the pass, stole it away. Well, I, I think this league, I really do think this league has the best officiating in the country, Bob. And this league feeds down into the American Conference and some of the smaller leagues, the way they grow their younger guys. I just have seen worse this year by coaches who didn't get T. That's all. Landon Lucas just got a three-second violation. That's the Kansas turnover. Hey, man, how about that game? Your NFL shakeup that they're going to talk about via free agency indoor trade at halftime clears the way for a certain now former Dallas Cowboys quarterback to find a new address with a team that feels like they've got a chance. Yeah. If Tony Romo's their signal caller. Would love to see Tony Romo in Houston. Let's see if what gets to transpires same. that domino effect turns yep. into exactly that as Jalen Fisher. And Brodzianski played two-man ball and a reach-in called on Vic. Second on Vic and the sixth on Kansas. So both teams now out of fouls to give. Kansas does a really good job, and they have it tonight, of double-teaming the ball out of the post. But I would try to get the ball inside the next couple possessions to Brodzianski if I could. I just think he could have some success in there. Quick fadeaway, perfectly executed, and Brandon Parrish knocks it down. He played really well last night. He's one of those seniors that have been here from the beginning with Trent Johnson and experiencing a little taste of winning and success this year. And a great student athlete as well. Lucas tries to bully Brodzianski in the post. Alex Robinson the other way. He'll wait for some help. Fisher down the lane with the left hand. Bill Self wants a timeout. We'll step aside for 30 seconds while Bill Self spends some quality time with his Jayhawks. It's your parents. Championship, and you've got an incredibly cute kid, by the way. That helps you get on television. But you can always spend some time at the college basketball experience right next door. It is great. It is a basketball mecca. And obviously, it is the host for the Big 12 Championship. Now at Kansas TCU, that is the fight we have right now to see who advances to take on Iowa State tomorrow night in one of our semifinals. And then John Shabby and Miles Simon are standing by ESPNU. The other two semis later on, or quarters, I should say, later on tonight as Fima Kailuk made his first three consecutive threes but missed his last two now. Back three is there for Brandon Parrish. He scores five straight. And here's TCU back within five. And remember, he was red hot last night in that win over Oklahoma. Frank Mason is fouled by Fisher. Second foul on Fisher. Back to the line goes Frank Mason. Hey, speaking of the basketball college, college basketball experience at the College Basketball Hall of Fame, congratulations to our own Jay Williams, who's uh, been selected to the College Basketball Hall of Fame along with Tim Duncan and John Stockton. How about that trio? Is that pretty good? And that ceremony will be in November, as they do it in conjunction with the CBE Classic, which uh, we, I was here this past year. Speaking of all of Famer. Kansas won, yep, and there you see Larry Brown, who's, he's like a father or grandfather who's got kids everywhere, you know, coach, coaching. 
Tim Jankovic down at SMU, Bill Self, John Calipari. Of course, he won a national title here in 1988 in Kansas City. At Kemper. Yep. Eighty and the Miracles. Coming up on two minutes to go in the first half. Danny Manning's done a terrific job resurrecting Wake Forest basketball. Dino Gaudio got up to the NCAA tournament. They went to a drought. Robinson, the extra pass to the corner. There's another three. This one from Desmond Bain. TCU's trying to shoot their way back in yeah. this game. Good-looking freshman out of Richmond, Indiana, right on the Indiana border with Ohio. He was a really good late signing. Graham from the corner. Landon Lucas. Oh, yeah. Will be called for the foul. He bumped Brodzianski. Well, Landon is the best at that. He is so smart. He's like a 12-year NBA veteran. That time he got away with a little nudge. And, and that happened. I'll tell you why this was called. Take a look right there. Watch a little nudge and see the body go forward. Now, he traveled a few plays ago, which we showed on, re which we didn't show. Jamie Dixon got teed up. And ever since then, I think the officials, in my opinion, as a former coach, they know they missed it. And that was just, we're just trying to make it all even. Well, Take this is the yeah. traveling call on Landon Lucas that yeah. wasn't called. Yeah, th this was dancing with the stars here. <laughs> and now Vic gets the basket. That set Jamie Dixon off. And all's well now. Everything's okay. You're declaring yes. that everything's a truce, okay. A ceasefire. The mayor of the Big 12 has determined <laughs> that everything's fine here at the Sprint Center. But, but we, I love Landon Lucas. He is so smart. He's made the most of his talent. And it looks like there might be something that has to be looked at on either the foot or leg of Brodzianski. Yep, he's got some blood coming down the right shin. So he needs to be tended to. TCU has pulled within two. They are shooting 57% against Kansas here in the first half. Mitch Lightfoot slips to the goal. But steps on Mitch Lightfoot, so that gets Carlton Bragg back up off the bench. Yeah, the freshman was so open that I don't think he realized that he could have probably put the ball on a 4-1 dribble. From Gilbert, Arizona, really good athlete. A little surprised he hasn't played more this year. We had him at the Under Armour All-American camp where he was one of the standouts a couple of years ago. Luke bought the fake, but then stepping on the end line was Brandon Parrish as he lost his balance on the drive. Holly? One of the things keeping TCU in this game right now is rebounding. They're up plus five over the Kansas Jayhawks. The Kansas coaching staff said they were really concerned about this coming into the game today because without Josh Jackson, who's averaging almost eight rebounds a game in conference play, that their smaller players, Vic and some of the other guys, would need to step it up, but they haven't. The boards are in TCU's favor, plus five. That's a great point, Holly. Josh has had seven double-doubles in his last 11 and really picked up the slack. That's great. Great point. Mason goes down hard. Yeah, when Kansas lost Yudoka Azabuki, back to a wrist torn ligament and he had surgery just after the new year he was declared out for the rest of the season you thought a team that was pretty thin on the front line would really take a hit and then josh jackson as a stretch forward took his game to another level as the season went on he's a top six rebounder along with landon lucas so they've got four guys in the top six in rebounding but one of those suspended for today's game by Bill Self and on the bench. Yeah, and I, and I thought he really came into his own after the injury to Azubuki because, as I said to you during the season, him playing the power forward spot, which he's not going to be in the NBA, he's going to be a wing player, but it allows him to use everything in his arsenal, the strength, the size, the speed, the quickness, both well, inside and out. Came up short. For the tie, it's Robinson. He rolls home a three. TCU has come back to deadlock this game at 42. 
give TCU credit for just the stick to it of this when Kansas went up double figures. Poise, experience, and good backcourt play. About a six second differential. Mason, off balance floater, does not go. A chance for TCU to take the lead at halftime. Williams lobs it, getting shut down at the rim. But it looks like going to the free throw line will be Desmond Bain, as he was challenged by Devontae Graham with five and a half seconds to go on the half. Well, and how about the pass, throwing it up there to the freshman. Watch Kenrich Williams. He's going to let the youngster from Indiana go airborne and come away with two free throws. That might, been a, that might have been a play where you get the last shot of the half because they would have been able to do it. Let's see how Kansas reacts with five seconds. We know there is time for Graham or Mason to go coast to coast. TCU leads for the first time. This is a good substitution because it slows down the game. That's not doesn't allow Kansas to rip and go, but here comes Devontae Graham. Plenty of time to get one off before halftime sets up Bragg. That's an air ball. And TCU down by 12 with four and a half minutes to go in the half. They've got the lead at halftime. They made shots, poise, and good guard play, especially Alex Robinson. What a comeback by TCU, Holly. Well, Coach Dixon, what is it that's allowed your team to play with such balance and composure in this first half? You know, we stuck with it. We got a little frustrated early because they were making shots. Got back to our man-to-man. -man. I, I, I tried the zone. It wasn't good for us, so I take blame with that. But uh, they stuck with it, made some shots, and uh, we got some confidence going right now. You know Kansas can come back in the second half, so what is the defensive focus? Well, we didn't turn it over, and they didn't get transition in the last part of the half, so that was big. And that's key for us. We can't let them hurt us on the boards, and I thought we did that down the stretch. But maybe it's the purple you're wearing. I think that's what's helping us, Holly. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Low stroll back to the court for Devontae Graham and his teammates, though. 43-42, TCU has the lead. Bob Oshusen here with Fran Fraschilla. Holly Rowe will join us in a moment. What a turnaround, and credit to TCU. They took that body blow from KU in the first half and answered. They did, and they wound up shooting 57% as a team in the first half, so that's a big deal. And I love their poise. Jamie Dixon comes in, right, with a winning attitude. They've had a good season with 18 wins. And you like the fact that when Kansas got them down early, they responded the way you think a winning team should. And now the Jayhawks have their hands full, Bob. No players in double figures in the first half for TCU. They were led by Kenrich Williams, who's got nine. But eight different players scored in the first half for the Horn Frogs. And Frank Mason starts off the second half with a miss. Here comes Jalen Fisher. He'll pull up. And Mason's got the rebound. Gerald Vick sets up Mikhailu. Long rebound. Behind the back goes Alex Robinson. Gets a return. Can't finish. But the follow is there for Kenrich Williams. Terrific hustle by Alex Robinson. First, to get the defensive rebound, he juggled the ball and then threw it behind his back. Vick. Short. Foul called, and it looks like that's going to go against Brodzianski. And a moment ago, Holly caught up with Bill Self. Coach, you're down nine rebounds at the half. What was your message you delivered to your team about who and where they need to come from? Well, I, th I really thought our, our starters played pretty good. You know, when we went to our bench, it was bad, and, and uh, we got to get more production. You're not going to win with five guys. And, and uh, But TCU played well. They shot the ball great uh, after the game started, and, and we didn't shoot it near as, near as well. So we got our hands full this half. They have really balanced scoring. A lot of guys contributing. Where do you focus defensively second half? Just guard them. I mean, we got to we got to focus in on everybody. Uh, you know, you're exactly right. It's not like one person that's killing us. It's like five, and five is much harder to guard than one. All right, thanks, Coach. Frank Mason hits a three to tie it, and two 
Bill Self's point and to Holly's point, eight different players scored in the first half, Fran, for TCU. They put 45 points on the board and did not have a player in double figures. Yeah, and again, they, they moved the ball well. They were poised. They play with those two point guards. And by the way, one of those point guards just picked up his third foul, Jalen Fisher. Uh-oh. Landon Lucas throws it down. How many times have we seen all year Kansas scoring on the sneaky plays, the lobs, the inbound plays? That was an easy one. Robinson drives. That's off the rim. Spins to Landon Lucas. Graham for three. Landon Lucas, offensive rebound, stripped away though. And Rich Williams took it right out of his hands. Boy, Landon Lucas got great inside position. Good hands by Devontae Graham. Just couldn't finish it. But a terrific job of getting space. Let's see if they double. They won't. Wojcicki smoothly done with the right hand over Landon Lucas. Listen, if you don't double him, I'm not saying he's going to score every time over Lucas, but he becomes a handful. Mason turned it over, taken away by Robinson. Chance for TCU to take the lead back. Fast break, Bucket gives them the lead. A nice pass from Kenrich Williams, shoveled it off to Desmond Bain. Yeah, Bain knows how to score. He was almost a 2,000-point scorer in high school. Rodzianski pins the layup attempt of LeGerald Vick. Well, that's got to be going to him. And not a smart play by Steve McKaylin. You're right, because I think that ball was going to be short. Way really short. That yep. had no chance of going in. A great point, Bob. And once it hit the board. But let's go back and watch. Kansas has doubled sometimes tonight. This time one-on-one. -on -one, and he's got that really soft touch. And then watch the youngster from Slovakia with the block right before it hits the board. Bill Self just got a technical foul. Bill Self, I think, is continuing to argue that the shot was on its way up on the Svi Mikhailu goaltend, but from our vantage point, it looked like the ball had hit the backboard. Yeah, and Bob, it, it has to hit the backboard, and the entire basketball, if any part of it, let's watch now. No, I think he blocked that ball. That one was blocked into... The board, I thought, cleanly. And I think it's the Svi Mikhailu yes. goaltending block that Bill Self was arguing that drew the technical foul. And Brodzianski, who was an 80% free throw shooter, makes Kansas pay. And now it's a six-point TCU lead. Let's watch right here. The ball hits the board. Yep, that's easy. I mean, that's a, seriously, that's a junior high call right there. Although, junior high guys normally don't get up that high. So now how does Kansas respond? Again, no Josh Jackson serving the one-game suspension imposed by Bill Self. He'd be eligible to play tomorrow against Iowa State if the Jayhawks win. And Kansas had a 12-point lead in the first half. That's been erased and then some. And Vic turns it over. Sloppy dribble. Robinson gets even sloppier. Yeah, that was a that was not a smart play by. Alex Robinson, he knew he had Brandon Parrish behind him, and he got way too cute, and that's a possession you can't afford to give away if you're fighting the bully on the block and the 13-time regular season champions. Landon Lucas slips to the goal, and he's challenged by Williams, and a foul is called. Well, I'd love to see that one again. Williams was inside the restricted arc. Take a look right here. Here's the slip. It's a great slip. Now they, they, it was looked good up top. Maybe body here. You see that left arm? The left arm on his chest. Yep. It looks like was what drew the whistle. Yep. Landon Lucas was number two in the Big 12 in rebounding in conference play. Average 10 rebounds a game. 
He's like a master craftsman in low post play. You know, both, both ends. The way he slipped that screen. And doesn't normally have to be a scorer. I mean, he only averages about seven and a half points a game, but today, without Josh Jackson, more of a limitation offensively for Kansas. They need more scoring from Landon Lucas. And he's got 10. Three on the way. That's off the mark. Brandon Parrish could knock it down. And it's over to Kansas. Seven of the last 11 games, that's a double-double sitting on your bench right there. Mason for three. Doesn't get the roll. The lead's up to seven for TCU. Playing with confidence, Brandon Parrish, the local kid. Mason's pass intercepted by Kenrich Williams. He draws the foul. When we come back, a chance for TCU to open up a nine-point lead. It's TCU, Bob. That's what's gone on the first four minutes. They've kept their composure. They're making shots. They're getting stops. And they're giving the number one seed a run for their money. As well, and someone invited TCU to Lawrence Fieldhouse East and didn't tell them this is a big home court advantage for Kansas because they have silenced the crowd as Kansas in about nine and a half minutes has two buckets and Kenrich Williams is at the line to try and give TCU a nine point lead. for Kenrich Williams and now the crowd of Jayhawk fans here are trying to get the team back into this game as Landon Lucas draws a foul underneath good bread and butter play by Bill Self out of the timeout misdirection to the left come back to the right look inside they didn't score but they picked up another foul that's the second on Brodzianski and he'll go to the bench at least for the time being Guard lineup, everyone can make a three. Vic from the corner. In and out. Landon Lucas tips it to himself. How good was that? Shepard at inside position. Mason's foul. Watch Lucas now. That shot goes up. Great box out by Shepard. Lucas goes vertical without going over the back and uses the play to tip it to himself. And a foul on Alex Robinson, his second, deemed to have been on the floor. Devontae Graham on the drive, lost it. Taken away by Desmond Bain. A double-digit lead for TCU, and Bill Self wants a timeout. The crowd is stunned here in Kansas City at the Big 12 Championship.
GTI Friday's endless apps are back. I'm looking for guys who are going to st step up and make plays. And then he looked down to his right to the end of the bench to Frank Mason. He said, come on, Frank, we're counting on you. He's got the player of the year on his bench, and he's waiting for him to take over. He said, we want this one possession at a time. Be smarter. There's plenty of time left. You know, we've seen Frank Mason time and time again this year, Holly, take over these kind of games. Remember, this is a Kansas team, even though they won the league going away, they were in more close games this year than at any time I can remember in, in conference. He's been here before. Makai Luke allows the flyby, floats one to Lucas, back to Mason. Now it's Makai Luke. Hits a three. Ball movement for Kansas. Out of the timeout. Gets the crowd back into it. What you like about that is they passed up good shots until they got a great shot. And Rich Williams right at the rim. Easy two for Kavar Shepard. Another defensive breakdown for KU. Yep, and I said earlier, Bob, poised by TCU, taking advantage of those breakdowns. Vic lost his footing, but kept his dribble. Mason for three. for a four-point play for the player of the year. Ball screen by Lucas. Been there. Done that. Third foul on Alex Robinson. And it looks like Jalen Fisher will take Robinson out. Nineteenth game this season for Frank Mason with 20 points or more. How about this kid? At Indiana, late signee, didn't have a lot of offers. Graham is fouled on the hedge by Shepard. And that will put TCU over the limit. A one and one for Devontae Graham. So with 12.26 to go, Fran, now Kansas is not a good free throw shooting team. They are ninth in a 10-team league at 66% as a team, but they have a chance to shoot a lot of free throws before this game's over. And remember, Bob, they started the season when we started watching them very poor. In Big 12 play, it's gotten to about 70%, so I'd take my chances with Graham and Mason. And keeping in mind as well, Josh Jackson is suspended. The only silver lining to that is a 56% free throw shooter. So he's being replaced yep. by much better free throw shooters. And remember, Frank Mason challenged his teammates this week that among the things that has to happen, we have to be better at the foul line. Kansas has played 11 games in the conference decided by single digits. They've won 10 of them. Step, turned it over. Devontae Grant forced one to Mason, who found it somehow. Makai Luke is fouled. Kenrich Williams puts Makai Luke at the line. That's Williams third. A recipe, a rep, recipe for an upset is not to allow Kansas to score easily, and by fouling them, that's what they may be doing. One of two at the line. 17 in the game for Mikhailo. Timeout 
called by Jamie Dixon midway through the shot clock. TCU is shooting 58% for the game, 63% so far in the second half. So a great one in the ACC and a very surprising one so far in the Big 12. Six point lead for TCU over Kansas. And Holly, how about Jamie Dixon in that last huddle? Well, in that last huddle, he asked his team to have a little bit more flow rhythmically on offense. He said, we've got to be more aggressive and attack. They want to get Kenridge involved here a little bit more. And then on defense, he said, those guards are going to ball fake you, try to get to the foul line. We're giving them too many easy free throws. Points without the clock running are not what we want. And to that point, they've already committed eight fouls. And we haven't even played nine minutes yet in the second half. It'll stay with TCU with two seconds on the shot clock. Landon Lucas, what a play he just made. He waited for Williams to dribble to the lane, and then he came with a double. Has to be a quick one, and it is, and it's off the mark. Shot clock violation. Devontae Graham left the game for a period of time in the first half, nursing what seemed to be an injured left ankle. Got taped up, came back. And now limping a bit again, but stays in the game. TCU, their largest lead was 11. Kansas's largest lead, 12. So we have had a roller coaster of a game. Lucas in the post. Yes. Last two plays, he's affected the game. Like he's done all year with the defense first and the offense. I, I honestly think Lucas is the best post defender Bill Self has had at Kansas. He's that good. He's like he's like Monte Morris in his playmaking. Rodzianski tried to pull him away from the rim and missed the three. Mason pulls up. He's got a triple. We'll step aside for 30 seconds and come back to Kansas City. Wow. Bill Self said he wanted Frank Mason to take this game over, according to Holly Rowe, a couple of timeouts ago. I think the player of the year got the message. Yeah, and it's no surprise, Bob. It really isn't. We've seen this all season. It started with the 30 points against Indiana in the last second shot by Duke. He's been as consistent as any player in the country, let alone as good as any player. Now Devontae Graham picks up his third foul and the third Kansas foul here in the second half. We've seen it enough to know that even his bad games are good. Look at Lucas. He's unbelievable. Robinson pulled the string. A chance for Kansas to take the lead back. Mason. Long rebound. Tapped around. Landon Lucas has it. Makai Luke hands one off to Graham in the corner. That's off the mark. With Gerald Vick, the putback won't go. An empty trip for Kansas, but they are swarming. Brodzianski tried to repost, and Landon Lucas roughed him up and gets called for the foul. 20 seconds before that, Lucas looked over at the bench and said, I need one. And he was trying to hang on, and Brodzianski was able to pick up the foul. He picked up his second, so now he will get that rest as Dwight Colby comes back in. See, I would make Colby guard ball screens right now without Lucas. Brodzianski comes out, sets that screen. Not bad by Colby. A reset for Jalen Fisher. Kenrich Williams on the drive. 
How about that? Yep, and there's no rim protection for Kansas, and that's how Williams was able to get to the rim. Explosive, coming off knee surgery a year ago. Vic for two. Yes. J.D. Miller hit the underside of the rim. Trying to get shut down by Colby. Devontae Graham in and out. Mason taps it back. Graham down the lane. Tried to give it up to Colby. He wasn't ready for it. Here comes Jalen Fisher. Can't lay it in. But the follow is there for Alex Robinson. What a heads up play by the point guard. Mason needs one as well, Bob. We saw this at Kansas State when he was playing on fumes. And Bill Self knows it. He got his team to call a timeout with TCU on top by three. What a game. Still two more to come tonight in the Big 12 championship in Kansas City. Row of Kansas wants to pull this out of the fire. Well, late in games, he has been one of the toughest. He is second in the conference with 37 minutes per game this season. And he said, you know, I have been exhausted at times, but he thinks his mental toughness is stronger than his physical fatigue. Frank showed us before, including late season comebacks against West Virginia, that he's got what it takes. That time he set up Makai Luke, and Makai Luke couldn't hit it. How important was that rest for Frank Mason? Well, Bill Self was going to get the under eight timeout on the very next whistle, and he felt like he couldn't even wait for a whistle. He spent one of the two remaining Kansas timeouts for a timeout he would have gotten had they just played until the whistle blew. When we were watching Frank Mason at the, prior to that last timeout, he looked like he was in his corner at the beginning of the 15th round <laughs> of a championship fight, didn't he? That foul on Landon Lucas, his third. And the Big 12 leader in double-doubles, 14 of them this season, including four in a row. Capped with a double-double last night against Oklahoma. And Rich Williams at the line. But only a 55% free throw shooter. There's a lot of respect around the conference for the way he plays. Here comes Carlton Bragg in the game. Svi Mikhailuk will sit down. Will Self's going to go conventional here with the two bigs. That's good defense. Williams sitting right in Carlton Bragg's lap. So they couldn't throw it inside. Vic looks for three. That's a long two. Got a toe on the line. And that makes it a two-point game. Eight now for Vic. You mentioned at the beginning of the show, he had 17 in that first meeting at TCU. Williams comes up short and he knew it. Went racing after a shot that he knew was going to miss. A chance for Kansas to tie or take the lead back. Watch the screen here. Mason to the top. Robinson split the defense. Post position, and the jump hook is there for Kavar Shepard. This TCU team's tough. Bob, Tougher than you realize. Bob, they've been in games all season. And I said it earlier, you can play well in this league and lose. And that would be the story of TCU's season. Most wins ever in the conference, six. Bragg, a deep jumper. No, and probably not the shot Bill Self was looking for. Jamie Dixon has brought a winning culture here 
And boy, would this be another building block. Robinson found a cutter. Carlton Bragg got the block. Devontae Graham off to Bragg. Blocking foul called on the pass. So that will put, I believe, Devontae Graham at the free throw line as he was fouled on the drive before he shoveled it off. Shepard picks up the foul. That's his second. Kansas and TCU fighting for the right to take on Iowa State in the semifinals tomorrow night. And then Miles Simon and John Shambi will take over at 7 Eastern over on ESPNU. West Virginia meets a Texas team that pulled off a bit of an upset last night coming from behind against Texas Tech. And of course, Baylor gets their Big 12 tournament underway against Kansas State. You know that guy wants this team to win. Back in 2013, the last time that TCU beat a top five team, they beat Kansas. Since then, they are 0-22 against ranked teams. Jansky, too strong, but the tip follow is there, and score the bucket, plus the foul. How about the follow from Cambridge Williams? Bob, I think Williams was lucky. It, ball, it, it seemed like the ball slipped out of his hands into the basket, but the effort wasn't lucky. Watch the slip screen. Here comes Bragg, and watch the ball. He just gets a piece of it with his fingertips. And Landon Lucas just going for the loose ball, picks up his fourth foul. Couldn't complete the three-point play. Mason splits the defense. Sets up Vic. Extra pass to Grant. He's got a three. KU's got the lead. Posts with five on the shot clock. Skyhook, short. Here comes Mason. Cruises in. Can't score it. They got numbers if they push. Oh, they didn't see Robinson. Luke, Lucas was playing the goalie. But Robinson could have attacked him with his four fouls, Lucas. Team forces it up and puts it through. And Jamie Dixon can't believe it's not an end one. And that's a freshman you've never heard of. And a Seton Catholic raised by his great grandparents and signed late for Jamie Dixon when he got the job. In and out, offensive rebound, Lucas draws the foul. Landon Lucas to shoot to try to give Kansas the lead back when we return. Number one in a battle with three and a half minutes to go. It's back and it's front. No, really, the triple double crunch wrap big Devin with Bill Self as the head coach. But they always seem, and so many times this year, Fran, to take these KU fans right to the brink. <laughs> they have had so many close games, and normally Frank Mason is good enough to pull it out of the fire. Yep, less margin for error this year than any time I can remember recently for Bill Self. But because he's a great coach and they have a closer, and they have guys that do the little things like Landon Lucas, It is a huge reason why Kansas 
This year, more than most, has find, found ways to win as opposed to just blowing people out. That's why Bill Self not only was the Big 12 Coach of the Year, in a few short weeks, we'll find out if, he was, if he's in the Naismith Hall of Fame. So the officials were at the monitor, and they were trying to see if LeGerald Vick's shot was a two or a three. And it certainly looks as if you can see a little bit of light-colored court between his right toe and the line. So that was a three for LeGerald Vick. So the score stays right where it is. And Landon Lucas can't tie it up. And now Don Daly says, wait one more moment. And talks to the scorer's table again. Now he wants to bring Ray Natilli over to join the conversation. Bob Wischusen here with Fran Fraschilla. Holly Rowe as well. And I guess they want to take one more look and see if LeGerald Vick's shot was a two or a three. I think there's definitely daylight there, don't you? And you know what? I guess what they're doing now is changing the call on the floor. Originally, it yeah. was a two. And so now they're ruling it a three. I thought originally it was ruled a three. And now you can see Kansas just grabbed an extra point. Now, they have DV Sport. They have about six different angles in the building they can use to take a look at that call. I mean, I've been told by our production truck we can blow it up to give them the closest possible look, but uh, they have a good feel for what they're doing over there. So now Landon Lucas only needs one free throw to give Kansas the lead. in for Brad. Lucas playing with four. I think when you look back on the season, Bob, he's the second most important Kansas Jayhawk. Maybe Josh Jackson's second, he's third. But and Kenridge Williams is playing with four for TCU. Yeah. He might be the most important TCU on front. Lucas is like a Hall of Fame offensive lineman, you know? You have to really start. Deep jump hook, no good. Williams, did he go over the back? If he did, he's done. Jody Dixon disagrees. Makai Luke had inside position. And the question is, did Kenrich Williams stay vertical? And the official said no. I'm not sure he realizes that's his fifth. He's walking all the way down to rebound. But I think the scorer's table is now going to alert the officials that that is foul number five on the Big 12's double-double leader, who is now done with 3-12 to go. Is this guy grown up? Mikhailu, he started a handful of games of his, at the beginning of his freshman season. And then his first Big 12 season, he did not play very much. It's been a process. Robinson cruises to the goal, but blew the layup. That's the second or third time today A-Rob had point blank at the rim. And he was able to get deep because of Lucas's four fouls. Devontae Grant, a little too strong. But a throw away nearly, and yes, it is a turnover. As Desmond Bain tried to outlet the freshman Jalen Fisher, 
And a sloppy backcourt turnover for TCU. You're gonna knock out the bully on the, on the block. You can't make these mistakes. And you see Bain with the errant pass. Mason down the lane. The floater goes, and boy, that turnover feels like a killer right now for TCU. Rodzianski missed everything. Mason floats it way over the head of Vic and out of bounds. They had it set up. Vic was at the rim, uncontested. Just too much air under the ball from Frank Mason. Josh Jackson, maybe. But Gerald Vic, a little too high. It's Larry Brown. You see Wayne Simeon right behind him. Bill Self's first big man back in 2004. Vic called for the foul. Ruled on the floor. The TCU bench wants continuation. Raina Tilly says no. Foul on the floor. So Brandon Parrish will go to the line to shoot a one and one. Seventh team foul on KU. The turnarounds in this game have been amazing. Kansas leads by 12 in the first half. TCU fights all the way back to get a one-point lead at halftime. Then they come out, dominate the first six or seven minutes of the second half to take an 11-point lead. And now, about a 14-point turnaround the other way from just under 14 minutes to go until about two minutes ago when Kansas got the lead back. Oh, and that's what Kansas has been about this year. It's and been TCU, a game of waves, though. Yeah, well, you know, TCU, on the other hand, Bob, they've lost close games like this. Yes. Mikhailu had his pass snuffed out by Robinson. Robinson misses another layup, but this time he's fouled. Now Frank Mason needs to be helped up. He ended up behind the stanchion. And he committed the foul. Take a look. Watch Robinson now. Watch Mason come into your picture. And challenges, fouls, but he... Keeps Robinson from getting a chance at three. And he puts pressure on Robinson now to make these two free throws. You know, there's this idea in college basketball that we have turned the NCAA tournament into such a monster that these conference tournaments don't mean too much. The first two games we have seen in the quarterfinals today. We still have two more days to go yeah. in the Big 12 championship. You're going to tell me this tournament doesn't mean something to these players with the effort we saw Iowa State, Oklahoma State, now TCU, Kansas? Well, especially here in this building where there's so much history and tradition. Formerly the Big 8, now the Big 12. Two big free throws by Robinson. Tie game with 105 to go. Landon Lucas can't roll it home with the Lucas came up empty and Jamie Dixon will spend his final time out here. So you have to be impressed as well with TCU. They take the punch from Kansas. They lose the lead. Now they come back and get it tied. Kenrich Williams is fouled out. Not an option anymore. Right. Jalen Fisher hasn't been real effective today. Alex Robinson has missed layups. Where do you go right now if you need a bucket for TCU? What do you draw up if you're Jamie Dixon? To me, I'd go pick and roll with Robinson and Brodzianski. Lucas has four. He's got to be careful. A-Rob has to go to the basket and attack. But for Kansas, you have the closer. No matter what happens on this end of the floor, you're going to have the ball in Frank Mason's hands down the stretch. And why not? 
brilliant all season comeback kid tonight. And he's going to have the opportunity, Bob, once again, to be a hero like he's been all season long. 27 points, six assists, and three rebounds for Frank Mason. And he is almost certainly, unless we go to double or triple overtime, going to lead Kansas in scoring for the 23rd time in 32 games this year. It's been a, it start to finish, right? I mentioned earlier, it started in Hawaii. Remember, last year at the end of the season, the team revolved as much around Devontae Graham as anybody else. The most valuable player of the Big 12 tournament. His buddy has been the player of the year this year. Let's see where TCU goes. Jamie Dixon says, take your time to Alex Robinson. Yeah, it's going to be pick and roll. Here it comes. Rodzianski slips. Robinson drives it. And this time he doesn't miss the layup. I like it. He missed layups, Bob, but he's been making them all season long. You dance with who brung you. Mason tries to answer and is fouled. Robinson thought that Mason simply lost his balance. And Robinson is called for the foul, and everyone on the TCU bench I thought, collapsed. I thought he lost his balance. Now, was there a bump? Let's take a look. Watch his feet. He lost his balance, Bob. If anything, he tripped over the right leg of Brandon Parrish. Yeah. The foul and was the called on Alex Robinson. Yeah. That is, that is unfortunate. TCU lost a game at home to West Virginia a little over a week ago with a call that was probably a foul, but it was so close. That was not a foul. Well, even if Mason makes this free throw, TCU will have the ball with a chance to take the final shot of regulation. No timeouts for the Horn Frogs. Does Bill Self call a timeout? No. He's going to let his guys play the last possession. Same thing here. Spread the floor. Brodziansky and Robinson. And if Lucas comes into the play, attack the man with four fouls. Robinson to the corner. Baines shots blocked. But a foul called. Two and a half seconds to go. And Speed Mikhailu is called for the foul on Desmond Bain. Previous play, Robinson did it himself. That play, he took on Lucas. Watch him drive Lucas. Lucas helps, kick out. And you must give the shooter a chance to come down and land. You're in the act of shooting until both feet hit the floor. That's a relatively easy call. So and the freshman break. who shoots 73% has three chances at the line. This kid was an Indiana All-Star. He took a high school program with no winning tradition as far as it's ever been, and he scored almost 2,000 points in high school. He's got two. Now, if he makes this one in your TCU, don't you foul? If you're, I'm interested to see if Bill Self will use the timeout. He's got that one. And if there's a miss, does Devontae Graham use it? Because you can only go two dribbles or three at the most on a miss. He's got all three. And Bill Self will call timeout. How about TCU? To lose the lead, to have all the momentum going Kansas's way, and then to find a way to answer again and get the lead back. They are a tough as nails team, and they have gotten tougher, it seems, as this season has gone on. So now my question to you. Now you're in Jamie Dixon's huddle again. You know Bill Self. He's drawn up a play to try and get either Frank Mason, Devontae Graham a three. Do Here's you tell your guys to foul? Here's why he's not going to foul. Bill Self knows that. Bill Self's going to throw the home run ball down to the court. So hopefully, maybe it's Lucas who catches it and kicks it, okay? If you foul on a catch, 
75 feet down here, you may be fouling a guy shooting a three. So you have to, you're not going to foul. If they dribble it up, you foul, but that's not going to happen. They're going to run the UB Brown home run play, and Bill Self's going to try to design it so it's a catch, kick to a shooter, and get off a three. Jamie Dixon's telling his team, if they catch it down there, make sure you do not foul a shooter. If they're dumb enough, Kansas, to catch it in the backcourt and take two dribbles, then you foul. Yes, but maybe not, because what's going to happen? A heave, a long shot. So let's just see what happens. I look for the home run play, and that's where Lucas is lined up. But Gerald Dick will throw it in. Kabar Shepard will guard the ball. Six foot 11. Try to stay with Vic. There's the home run ball. Lucas with the catch, taps it to Graham. He's got a look. Yep. Just off the mark. TCU upsets Kansas. to find our player of the game, Alex Robinson. Holly? Well, Alex, your team was down. You get to the free throw line, score four straight points after a courageous drive to the basket. How did you will this team to a win? Uh, we just did what Coach told us to do. We followed the game plan. Uh, our teammates trusted in each other, and we came out with the win. We stuck together through this 40 minutes. This is a team in TCU that's never won here in the Big 12 tournament until this year. How is it to knock off the number one team in the country? Uh, it's all Coach Dixon, it's all his team, man. We stuck together, man. It, it, it's just a family out here, man. It's a family, we stuck together. It, it didn't matter if we were down or up, we were still gonna fight to the end. There were so many moments in this game, there was a turnover late that it seemed like maybe it was gonna get away from you. How did you have the composure to finish? Oh uh, man, we just listen to Coach. Coach tells us all the time to keep our composure, don't get too high or too low. So that's pretty much all I did. And, and we just, we just, Coach Dixon is a great coach, man. It, it, this is all him. I hate to kill your vibe, but Iowa State is waiting for you. How do you look at that matchup? Uh, we owe them one, too. We owe them one, too. We lost to them at, at, at their house. So uh, it's going to be a good game. They have great players. Monte Morris is a great player. Uh, Devontae Burton is a great player. So, I mean, we just got to prepare like we did for this one and the one we did for OU. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Survival for TCU. This close on a Devontae Graham buzzer-beating three-point attempt. And we might have had overtime, but instead, Fran Priscilla, the Frogs survive. Well, this is why, Bob, as you see Kansas head to the